Hey guys, welcome back to part three of the CL63 Nightmare Project. Let me show you guys, we got a bunch of new parts over here. So these are the new engine mounts. These are the new head bolts. You can see the part number over there. So 20 of these. Let me just open this up and show you. So these are the new head bolts. You can see that it's a e-socket now. Before it was a Torx a T55. We have our new engine mounts, new transmission mounts over here. So this is a hose that failed in the back where I believe this was leaking. As you can see, it's broken over here. So I got a complete new replacement whole assembly over here actually. So I'm gonna pop that in. Uh, new seals for the cam cover, there's two in here part number for that new oil filter housing seal because uh, i had to remove the oil filter housing to get the driver's side head out and of course we have our new head gasket so left and right new head gaskets here so we have the new engine mounts over here these are the new ones these are the old ones as you can see well basically this is just a heat shield cover and you can see like how it's been leaking down. So these are hydraulic filled. So what happens over time is like the top of this cracks and breaks and starts leaking hydraulic fluid and starts collapsing down, right? So this one here as well, looks like this uh, all of it leaked out, but you can see like over here how bad it is. You will feel a bunch of vibrations, really bad chassis vibrations throughout the whole body of the car especially when you do hard accelerations. When you go on the gas, you let off the gas, you'll hear a big thump. That's basically the engine dropping back down. This is because this is bolted onto this and then this lifts up and then goes back down and then basically drops on the, on the sub from there. So these are the new ones. This is basically just a cover. I'll show you guys how it's supposed to be. So you can see the difference between the two. So the big gap over here, so when these fail, these over time, they drop down a bit and the engine sits a lot lower than it should. So as you can see, the gap difference between, between the two, I'll put the camera like this. But uh, the car is going to be a lot smoother with the new uh, engine mounts and the new transmission mount as well. So the tranny mount, what happens is over time, this part here collapses downwards as well. And basically the rubber around it breaks apart gives out and then basically this rests on this resulting in uh, chassis vibrations as well how do you tell a transmission mount is bad once um, you have it in park there's a vibration but you put it in drive or reverse any of the moving gears you can tell if there's vibrations throughout the chassis that means typically it's you want to check your transmission mount and see if that's a cause or not so training mount new engine mounts one of the things i noticed is this is the alternator here it's supposed to have two bolts on the top. You can see there's one, and there's supposed to be two bolts on the bottom there, holding the alternator in place. Now, I did not remove any bolts for this alternator, and I'm feeling underneath, there's no bolts there either. So this alternator is held together by one bolt. So where does the alternator job? We'll replace it before, put one bolt back on. One bolt out of the four bolts, so. It's not good. I'll be adding uh, the other bolts there, obviously, before I uh, put everything back together. So this is how the cylinder heads look. So this is the left side, the driver's side. So this is all gasket material. So you're going to have to clean all this off before you can put this back on. So, But you can't use anything that's sharp because you don't want to scratch any of the surface. Otherwise, it's not going to seal up properly to the head gasket. So we're going to be cleaning all this carbon deposits. This is all normal. This is the other side, the passenger side, the right side. As you can see, all the carbon deposits. So that's all going to be cleaned up. So the new head gasket is ready to be installed here. I just did some quick cleaning on the pistons as well to get rid of the carbon deposits on the piston. And I uh, clean all this up so this is all nice and smooth. Take a look at the other side. 
So yeah, all the pistons have been cleaned up. Just a quick wipe down to clean all the carbon deposits on it. So the head gasket can now go on. Just gonna clean up on the cylinder head, nice and smooth now. Got rid of all the old head gasket material and did a super clean wipe and scrub on the uh, the valves as well. So the heads are ready to go back. So I've installed a new head gasket. Clean this up, slide the rail back in, clean, basically clean everything up in the area. I did vacuum everything over here as well. So we're gonna be going ahead and installing the, the uh, cylinder head on this side. guide rail pins back in so I just gotta punch them in now they have to line up with the guide rail assess in there you can see it's a little bit tricky to do that but as you can see better view over there that basically holds the holds the guide rails in place so these so we're gonna be tightening up the head bolts now so again we gotta do one two three four five six seven eight nine ten it's got to be in that procedure so they get tightened uh, is 10 newton meters first step. So you do 10 newton meters across the bend and then you do 50 newton meters the same way. And then after that is three 90 degree turns. So basically you take a, basically you take a torque wrench, you spin it to 90 degrees and you stop and you do that basically three times across the bend. So that torques it up. forgot to mention so when you're reinstalling the cylinder heads to line these up properly you have to undo the chain tensioner which is over here so as you can see I just get a good focus on that so basically it's a 24 millimeter socket that goes on it you have to basically take it out enough so you have enough slack on the chain to pull it up and then line it up properly to put the guide rails and the, the locking pins back in it actually screws in there. So you're gonna have to you have to move the alternator out of the way to do that. This side of the cylinder head is ready to go back on. These are little sliding retaining uh, clips, I guess you can call it. Basically, this slides into, into the head over here and through this gear and then basically holds it in place. And there's also a little Allen screw that goes in there. It's a little hole here and then holds it in tight so that this gear doesn't move around. the gears back in we can now go ahead and re-screw that tensioner back in so I'm gonna be putting this back in because this tensions the chain and these are back on So we just got our new NK camshaft adjusters in from the dealer. Let's just take a look. This is the part number for it. This is for the intake side. Uh, they're both the same left and right. So just to make sure you can see this as in. So this is what they look like brand new when they come from the dealer. It's like in this yellow bag. That's going to be going in. 
these are the bowls as well because it's better to replace these with the bowls and there's a little crush washer as well if we're going to be doing that so three things you have the crush washer you have the bowls and then you have the adjuster here so we have the oil filter housing here so you don't want to reuse the gasket on this one this one is completely dry rotten like plastic anyway so let's go ahead and replace it with a new gasket just so it doesn't leak any oil so let's just uh, put this on this is ready to install so i've gone ahead and installed the cylinder here's back back on oil filter housing is back on as well i've bolted the abc pulley and the pump back on as well and now what it's time for is to install the camshaft. Also, I've installed the alternator back on it. I put the, the tensioner back in as well. You just gotta make sure that this is still 40 degrees top dead center and it lines up with this mark over here. It says 40 degrees on the pulley. So you wanna make sure that this is, there's no play in this chain here. You wanna make sure that that tensioner is tensioning properly and there's no slack or play in this chain. If there is, then either I have a problem with the chain or the tensioner. Most likely it's the tensioner because the chain uh, it's doubled over here, right? So it's a double chain, so this doesn't usually fail. I've never seen one of these fail. And I've rebuilt tons of these engines before. So also, what you wanna do before you wanna install the camshafts is you wanna pre-oil the top of the valve buckets and also over here, the bearings on the for the uh, camshafts where it sits on the head, you wanna pre-oil that as well. You can use assembly lube on this but then again, I'll be starting this engine in less than 24 hours, so this oil will still be here. I just like to use a proper grade of oil. So I just took this and apply some oil so it avoids a, a dry start. So I'm gonna be going ahead and installing the camshafts now. I'll be telling you guys how to properly time this engine as well. You do need to have a proper timing toolkit, which I'll, I'll be showing you as well. Hey guys, so I've installed the camshafts. So intake exhaust. Basically, once you install these, you gotta carefully do one by one slowly because if you just install one, you put it all the way down, you screw it all the way down, what's gonna happen? You're gonna bend uh, the camshaft here and you're gonna break it. It's really easy to break this, so you gotta when you're installing this, you gotta install, you gotta screw every single one of these little bit by little bit, and you gotta keep repeating the process little bit by little bit and just go down and screw it on properly. The proper torque spec of this is 10 Newton meters. And then once it's all tightened down, just check again because you might have this one tightened all of a sudden, this one might be loose because it's a very light torque spec, so you wanna make sure that that's torqued on properly. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the timing tool. So this locks the camshafts in the back. I'm gonna show you how that works. This is basically, this holds the camshaft as well in place and then gets bolted down where the valve cover is bolted down. And this is for the camshaft adjuster. So it reads the sensors properly. And also this, this is a basically a loader for the camshaft. You wanna load it on. You wanna load it in the spring position and you slide it on and I'll show you guys how to do that as well. So let's go ahead and install this. This basically slides on in the back over here, All right? So you have these over here. So remember when I said that smallest side points up, this is because, so this can slide on, on the camshaft. So this goes on one way. It can't go like this, right? Because if you look at it, one sits slightly that way and one sits slightly that way. So it, this side is gonna go on this. So the shorter side is gonna go here. You can see mine is very used up because I've used this in a lot of engine builds before. So once you slide that on, you can put uh, basically the other tool over here. And then let me show you guys what I mean by that. So you take this, see the indents over here? That's for the camshaft. So it's gonna go 
like this and basically sit there once that's lined up. So you go one, two, and then basically three. This will be on last after the camshaft adjuster is on. So I'll show you that as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and install these. While you're trying to slide that on, you have to move the camshafts around like this and just kind of slide it in. It should move in very freely because remember you did oil all of that. So once if that oil that moves freely and then basically that's good. See, my moves moves good. So. Okay, to basically install the adjuster. So when you have all this in, remember the bolt goes through this plate and then you got your little washer in there as well. So this is the adjuster installer. This was a little too long here, so I had to shave it down a bit because some adjusters are incompatible with this tool, but I modified mine a bit. So what you need to do, what I always do is uh, find the hole over here and you basically insert this like this. You insert it, I know it's hard to see. And then you basically try to tighten the Allen bolt that's on the top. Tighten it with an Allen key. Tighten it with the Allen key, like so, until this is flat straight. So now what this does is this is able to slide on to the gear that's on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this on. Okay, as you can see, I have the adjusters on. So again, once you slide this gear on, you just unscrew this, take this off, and it stays in a spot over here because it's touching the gear down there, as you can see. And to install this plate, there is these pins that come out of it. The pins have to line up with the holes on this. This is basically for the sensor to read properly the cam sensor basically finds the position of how this sits. So this is very crucial that this matches this properly. So the way you have to do it, you have to keep spinning this part as you can slightly loose. So you just have to keep spinning these until this plate locks into place with the little dowels here. And then bolt this down. This also holds the camshafts down. And then you also have this metal plate here so keep all these in place and now you want to make sure still that this is at 40 degrees this is at 40 degrees and your timing is all right now you can go ahead and tighten these um these bolts here right it's 18 millimeter socket on goes on this i believe so i'm going to go ahead tighten these down to um, the proper torque spec and basically these plates here hold it so the camshaft doesn't move and the engine doesn't turn while you're tightening these down. So it's important and you have to do one side at a time. If you have two tools, you can use that, but there's no need. Do one side at a time. It doesn't matter which side, but I just happen to use this side because you guys can see it on the camera better. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten this down. So I've tightened these and I removed the timing tool now what we're gonna do is we're preparing for the cam cover to be installed here now so what you want to do you want to line up these these uh piston rings kind of looking like so what i do is if the opening is here for this one i put it the opposite end and then this one i bring it opposite end this is really hard for the oil to escape and it works better it makes your and shaft adjuster lasts longer too. So just make sure that these are lined up properly and put some oil on these as well because it's gonna make it easier for you to side this cover back on. So we're gonna do, we're gonna put a new seal here. So this is a part number for the gasket that goes there. Rather a large part number. But let's just take these out. Okay, 
so let's go ahead and install this here. So this leaks, it's a very common leak. This is what happens is dries up, flattens out, and you get oil leaking from here. So you gotta make sure that this gasket is new once you put this on because it's only about like seven eight dollars or something like that so you can't go wrong and that's from the dealership as well just make sure that this is pressed down nicely and then i'm going to oil up a little bit in here too and then gently just slide this cover on there's five bolts that hold it and put those on and basically plug in the plugs which are over here and there's a ground on it as well. Hey guys, so it's the same procedure for this side. Same way you're gonna be moving these around, to put, putting that timing plate on. Uh, the camshafts are in. Basically, these only go to the right position. If you try to put this on, it won't go there. So just make sure that these are on properly. And always make sure that you oil up so I put some oil in a little cup over here. So I just use my finger and just basically oil up all the main component parts, basically where the bridge is gonna be going on. The, uh, that bridge cap is gonna be screwing on to just oil all that up and follow the same procedure from this side to this side. So it's pretty much the same. So this side, the valve cover is ready to go back on. And uh, basically, yeah, it's all the little T30, Torx 30 bolts that hold it down. So. I like to put the valve cover on after and make sure that this timing is right and this is also at 40 degrees so after you've done this just make sure that you just slide this on over here to make sure that it goes on properly and the timing hasn't changed if you can't put this on at all and one of these is completely out that means you gotta do the timing again so i'll put the valve cover on after i'm done this side make sure the timing is still good left to right and it's at 40 degrees. After that, put the valve cover on and then uh, you can move on. So we have our new intake gaskets here, intake bolts. Uh, this is the uh, the groove pulley. We'll be replacing that as well. The smaller smooth pulley. And then we have our uh, the other bigger smooth pulley on the water pump. Oil filter is gonna be going in and our engine oil so we're getting close to um, starting this thing up so i did do some work off camera i replaced the spark plugs i put the valve covers back on and I put the ignition coils back on also this is a pcv valve that fails a lot what happens is this uh, dries up over time it gets hard the plastic gets brittle and it cracks up uh, the inside sphere looks okay too, so this we're not going to change for now. This is, it uh, looks like it was changed not too long ago actually, so that's okay. So I got the intake manifold bolted on. Before I connect the injector wiring harness, I'm going to show you guys the common problem with the M156s. What happens is the wiring over here kind of splits apart, gets dry rotted, the plastic surrounding around it and exposes the actual copper on the wire. So this is very common on these. This one doesn't look that bad, but all of this completely breaks apart and exposes the wire, resulting in the two wires touching and then basically the injector staying open and then you have the rest. Basically the engine gets uh, hydro lock if it gets really bad but this one looks okay i've inspected all of them it's not that bad it'll pass for now i've seen a lot worse but again this is nowhere near as bad as from what i've seen before but just basically another thing for you guys to know so some of these vacuum hoses don't look good so i'm gonna basically have to replace these completely breaking apart so, and this one as well they're just breaking apart and it's gonna have a, a bad idle might even stall out so i went ahead and got some new replacement ones this is a new vacuum hose from uh, original 
EMG and for this one I also have a replacement as well over here so I'm gonna go ahead and pop these hoses on and put this back on all right guys thanks for watching the part three stay tuned for part four uh, if you guys haven't seen part one and two make sure you guys do watch that as well so you're all caught up and also if you do like this video series please like and subscribe it will be uh, helping me out a lot thanks guys